Hey, welcome to Hardcore Sustainable. It's a beautiful summer day and uh, it's the middle of the growing season and my tomatoes are thriving. Um, and I wanted to share this little, uh, I don't know, this little technology with you. Um, you've probably gone to a store and bought um, those little metal tomato cages that are maybe about three feet tall and they're really only good for the first few weeks of the growth of a tomato plant. Before it outgrows the cage, the whole thing falls over, it has to be staked up. And that kind of cage might be useful for like a small, determinate uh, tomato plant. But for a lot of heirloom varieties, they're indeterminate, which means they just keep on growing. The determinate ones were bred for commercial, uh, like field, uh, agriculture and so they're made from machine harvesting so they grow to a certain size and they stop but heirloom and a lot of uh, a lot of the hybrids that they sell these days are indeterminate which means they just keep on growing um, so you need a better cage for that you need a bigger better stronger taller cage for that and uh, many years ago I was shown this um, kind of cage and I've used it ever since because it's so easy. Not only is it bigger, better, stronger, um, it lasts longer, and it also takes a lot of the work out of caring for tomatoes. So tomato plants, even different varieties, have different growth forms. Like, these are two different varieties here. This one's called Jetstar, which is kind of a stocky, low-growing variety that produces a smooth, uh, medium-sized tomato that just won't crack. Whereas this one right behind it, which is about twice as tall, this is Mortgage Lifter, which is an heirloom variety, and it grows large, big tomatoes. They're just a big red tomato. I think that's what they are, but they get huge, and you can see some of them forming on this. These cages can deal with all those different kinds of growth forms. Okay, so here's a good example. Um, you can see how these stems, I haven't done this in a few days, so these stems are kind of growing through the side. I let it go a little long. You don't want to have that much of the, of the stem coming out through the cage, but that's pretty much all you do is pull that through like that. And like I said, you have more chance of having damage if the, there's too much of it through there, growing through there. But we'll do that. We've got maybe like three main stems going here. And Three stems is probably what you want to shoot for with most of these, depending on the tomato variety. Some varieties are pretty lanky and skinny, and so they might need more than that. But this one's pretty bulky, it's pretty stocky, and so I think three does well. And the reason you want three stems is because they're going to grow away from each other and sort of push on the outside of the cage, and they'll grow up the sides of the cage. And it's also, three stems is enough to leave enough airflow You've got one stem down at the bottom, so you're getting good airflow underneath the whole plant. But then once it gets up this high, it's, um, it's spreading out more and it's filling out more of the cage. Because just one stem in here, it would just be falling against a side of the cage and that's not really as useful. We'll snip some of these off and just let those main stems grow. This one, go. Okay, huh. so that should stay pretty vigorous. The cage is there just to give the tomato plant some support so it doesn't fall over. That's as, as easy as it is. No, no uh, twine that you have to use to tie it up. You don't have to um, have an elaborate staking system. It's pretty much just this. You do want to stake these cages themselves down into the ground because otherwise they will flip over, especially when you get such top growth on these. In a storm or heavy winds, uh, it can blow over if it's not staked down. Also, if you grow them in a cluster like this, you're, you have many cages in a cluster in a bed, and this is a whole bed of tomatoes that I've got here. You can also stick them together and that creates even more strength in the whole structure itself. So you may be wondering how you make these cages. These cages are made of something called concrete reinforcement wire, or sometimes called remesh. And you can get this at pretty much any hardware store, like the big box stores sell it. I think I looked online and Lowe's had it, and it was about $100 for a 150-foot roll. 
and that's enough to make about 23 of these cages, which if you have a small garden, that's way more than you're going to need. You might go in on it with a friend or something or a couple gardener friends to uh, get a smaller number, but they're super easy to make and uh, the this wire comes in a big 150 foot roll, so it's already in this round shape. So you pretty much just have to um, uncoil about six foot of this stuff and then use a hacksaw to score right along these um, metal pieces and then pretty much it'll just break off. Um, so it's, it's really super easy and then you take um, basically the extra wire that's hanging off and you loop it around to create the cage and then you're done. And then you stake it down into the ground and voila, you have a cage that will last you 10, 15 years or more. I don't know, these, these things just seem to last forever and although they look rusty, um, they're not degrading. The metal is still intact um, and it's not like you would think that if, if it was rusting, it would be sort of rusting through, but it's not. They just, they come, the, the wire comes already rusty. Um, and it doesn't seem to degrade at all if you store it properly for the winter. Another great thing about these cages is that these holes, unless you're growing really, really big tomatoes, they're small enough that you can just reach in and harvest um, through, these, uh, through these squares. So, um, but I have had some tomatoes that get bigger than these squares, so that's something to think about, but usually you can just sort of like hand, hand it up to your, to your hand and lift it out the top if it's too big. Okay, so it's a little bit later in the season, and as you can see, these tomatoes are thriving. This one's grown a little bit out of the top of the cage, but these ones are staying within it. And I've done very little to maintain these other than pinch off the suckers, and they're just loaded with fruit. So that is the concrete reinforcement wire or remesh tomato cage, and I definitely recommend it to you. Um, it's super easy. It's relatively affordable. It lasts a really long time, and it's just this heavy-duty, sturdy tomato cage that you don't have to worry about that much. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click on the bell for notifications. Share and uh, give a thumbs up to the video, and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.